Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of ScreenFlow Live. This is actually the beginning of the third season, which I was just trying to figure out how we decide what season is what. But this is the 20th episode that I've done of ScreenFlow Live. It has been a while. We had the Christmas break. Uh, our last episode was with my friend Curtis. He was a uh, he is a professional editor. He edited the most recent uh, three-part miniseries about Princess Diana. So if you guys missed that episode, be sure to go back and check that out. Today we're talking a little bit more focused on ScreenFlow today. We're going in deep on how to create GIFs in ScreenFlow and um, some tips and tricks that I have about that and the best ways to do it. So stick around. We're going to be doing all about ScreenFlow Live. All right, we are back. And uh, before we start, I just want to say if you are interested in following us on social channels or being updated about this show, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash ScreenFlow. You can follow us on Twitter, at ScreenFlow. And you can find us on YouTube. Just type in ScreenFlow Tube. That is our uh, ScreenFlow channel on YouTube. And uh, those are up on the screen right now, so if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. It would be awesome. Also, if you want to be updated by email about these shows, we have a website you can find right down here at the bottom. Sign up to be notified when we go live. Telestream.net slash ScreenFlow Live. So with that stuff out of the way, let's get into GIFs and GIFs in ScreenFlow. So what are GIFs? Um, I think that it's probably pretty apparent to most people what GIFs are, but just in case, I'm going to show you what a GIF is. Um, I'm going to double check our comments. By the way, I am monitoring comments. If you guys want to say something here in the YouTube chat or in the ScreenFlow chat, go ahead and do that. I will answer any question you have about ScreenFlow or, I mean, if you want to ask some random question, I'll answer those too. But these are GIFs. I just went and said top GIFs right now. Giphy is a website. You can find GIFs. I know you can find GIFs on Imgur. Uh, you can find GIFs on your phone these days when I uh, send messages to people. So a GIF is a... Uh, oh man, was it like graphical interface object or something? The the exact definition of, of what it is, I don't think is necessary. But what it is uh, practically is a small snippet of video that is presented instead of as a video, it's presented as multiple frames of images and then looped over and over again. So like here, here's a GIF of a guy dancing. Oh come on, let's uh, this one right here, perfect. And you can tell that this is just a looped video of this guy over and over and over doing this little thing. And the way that people use GIFs is just like, it never ends the way people use GIFs. Like, let's say one of my friends texted me something and they said, dude, I got that new job. I'd send him this back instead of saying, how awesome is that? <laughs> yeah, you got that new job, you know? Um, and you can do really anything you want to do with GIFs. They can be, they can be changed as they can be used as really like in place of text. You can start using GIFs, but you can also use them from a business standpoint. Like if you saw the, uh, the GIF that we sent out about, um, about one of our, about today's show, it just had up in the top right corner, a spinning screen flow logo. And all I did was just add that spinning screen flow logo and it became a GIF. We use them also when we send out emails. Like if you download a trial of ScreenFlow, we're going to send you some emails. And in the email will be a GIF of the video that is linked to that email. So you can use it for fun. You can use it for business. You can use it for all kinds of stuff. But I think the first thing we should do is just show you how to make a GIF in ScreenFlow, how just unbelievably simple it is to do. So in ScreenFlow here, I'm going to just grab my favorite video, my face down walk video. And I'm going to pull it in here. And let's make it a five second GIF, but I want the GIF to start when he lights the fire right there. So I'm going to trim that just by pressing the T key on the keyboard. 
and then deleting the front. I'm going to click and drag this all the way to the beginning of my timeline. And then I'm just going to go to five seconds. And then I'm going to trim it again. Delete that last part. So now I have a five second clip that looks like this. Somebody lighting some seafood stir fry on fire and then adding a little bit more fire. So what I wanted to do, the, the ultimate goal of making a GIF is, let's say I like this five second clip and I want it to loop over and over again and I want to upload it to Facebook or something. Be like, look at this sweet thing that I saw. So all I have to do, it's very, very simple. I come up to file and I click export. And then in here, under presets, usually it's on web high. That's the, that's the basic preset, the default preset. I just come down to animated GIF. It's the one at the very bottom. And now it says animated GIF at 15 frames per second with 256 color and error diffusion dithering loop mode on. We'll get into that stuff in a second. I'll, I'll go over everything there, but I'm just going to say uh, fire test. And I'm going to export it. And it shouldn't take very long for a five second GIF. Uh, it looks like this will probably take, you know, maybe 15 seconds to export. And once it's ready to go, I have in my GIF stuff folder this new fire test. And what's going to happen, it's going to be a little tricky if you've never exported a GIF before. It's going to be a little odd when I pull it out because if you just come in here and find the GIF and double click on it, It's going to open up a preview window on your Mac, and it's just going to have frame-by-frame frame pictures. So you're not actually going to be able to see this GIF in movement. I think maybe if I went like this and just held the down key, I can see it frame-by-frame. Frame. But that's not the ultimate goal. The best way to see what your GIF looks like is this. Make sure that you open up a browser like Google. Let me just double check if there's any comments. There are not. Open up a browser, uh, not like Google, like Chrome, and grab that GIF and just drag it into the uh, drag it into the URL bar. And look at that. It just immediately starts looping this GIF in my internet browser for me. And you can see the guy brings in that little oil piece and starts pouring it on, and then it cuts right there and goes back to the beginning. It's because it's that five second loop. Now, a GIF like this, generally when you're on the internet and you find a GIF, when you're scrolling through Facebook and you see this kind of stuff, it's very unlikely you'll see a GIF that is this big because a GIF this big is pretty intensive in terms of the uh, the amount of uh, memory it takes up. This is an 85, 84 and a half megabyte GIF. Generally, people don't like GIFs that big when you're uploading to Twitter, when you're uploading to Facebook. You want it a little bit easier to do, a little bit more bite size. The GIF is all about being this bite-sized piece of media that you can use in multiple different places. So let's close that, and let's see how we can change the size of that. Of course, we could come in here and make it really small and change the, the, the size of our window, but it's just that's not the best way to do it. Um, the best way to do it would be in the export customization. So I've come back into export, and I have my animated GIF chosen. But here I'm going to click, uh, actually, let me see what manage says. Okay, that's what I thought. Customize. So it's a relatively small customization window. You have a frame rate option. You have a color option, a looping option, dithering and your strength for that dither. So we'll get into all of these. We'll go, I'm gonna export each one individually so we can see what it looks like um, on, a, on a different basis. So let's, let's do no dithering, 365 colors, 30 frames per second. And say, okay. But this is where I want to change the size. If I want to do it 1920 by 1080, cool, you can do that. But in general, people want something a lot smaller. I like to do 25% of the original. That's a 480 by 270 box that we're going to be exporting. And it's going to make it really small. So I'm going to export that out, replace what we have. You can see this, this exports, what was that, two and a half seconds maybe? So now I can come back into my GIF stuff folder. Let's bring it back over to this desktop. And I can t find my fire test. Now we can see instead of 84 and a half megabytes, this is only 9.6 megabytes. And it has a ha faster frame rate. We can see it going in the background, but I like to see it in Google 
or uh, in Chrome, what is that exactly going to look like? It's going to be that large, and it's going to have really good frame rate. Like that looks like a video, right? But it's just a five second looping video. If we come in and we change our our ratios here or our uh, export parameters, customize, and we do something like, you know. 10 frames per second, it's going to be very clear what's going on. Instead of a five second video at 30 frames per second, which is over, a, you know, 1500 frames, we're going to do 10 frames per second. Oh, wait. Yeah, that was right. Was that right? My math. Okay. 30 frames per second, five seconds. That's 150 frames. Excuse me. If we do 10 frames per second, it's only going to be 50 frames over this whole process. So we're going to go from a Let's see, 30 frames per second at this size is 9.6 megabytes. If we do uh, only 10 frames per second, that's going to take even less time. That took like a second to export. It's 3.9, so it's a little bit smaller, clearly. And now you can see the difference when we pull it into Chrome here again. You can see that even though it's significantly smaller, it's much choppier now. It still doesn't look bad, though. So if you're really trying to maximize that export size, you can drop it down to 10 frames per second. One of the nice things with creating GIFs is that because they are so small, it takes so little time to export them, meaning it's really easy to guess and check and go back and forth and change all the parameters to see if that's exactly what you want because it only takes a second to export it. So now if I was like, ah, you know, 10 frames per second isn't, isn't enough fluidity in the movement of the video, let me up it to 15 or 30 frames per second, it's only going to take me an extra 30 seconds to get a new version of that GIF to test to see if it looks good. So now that we understand the frames per second, let's go into the next part here. Uh, customize. Let's turn looping off. I'm going to put it back to 30. I, I never turn looping off because the whole point with a GIF is that you loop. Um, but there are circumstances where you might run into, you know, I only want this to play through one time. So let's export it with no loop, thir 30 frames per second, and replace our current one. Let's go back in here, fire test. Um, and then we're going to pull it into Google and do the whole process again. Pull it in here and see. So there you go. We got our five seconds, and it just freezes at the end. So if for some reason you don't want it to be playing all the time, maybe you're putting on the front of your website for your business, and you want it, it's a 10-second intro fade to black what you can do is make sure that this gif plays 10 seconds and then you put a little fade to black at the end and then it won't pay, play again and maybe it just blends into the background of your website so if you want to make sure it just plays once never again you take off that looping option let's go back in and see what the rest of our customizations are so i'm going to keep looping on so it, it's nice when you're going through uh these kinds of parameter changes to have the looping aspect on because then you can see it over and over again. I'm going to drop the colors down to eight. We're going to see what happens here. There's clearly more than eight colors in this video. So we're just going to see how it looks. We're going to replace our previous one. It's going to take three seconds to export. We're going to come back in here, find my fire test GIF. Whoo, that looks terrible. All right. Pull it in. So now you can see there's there's clearly something going on here. I can only have eight colors. That's because I've lowered the amount of uh, colors that are that are being rendered in this GIF, but that really helps. That took this 30 frames per second. Like you can see in the video here, it looks really smooth and nice, but it dropped it from almost 10 megabytes to two megabytes. So it's a fifth of the size by dropping the colors down. So if you're, if you're not worried about the colors, in this case, clearly you would be because it's such a nice, beautiful thing with all the different food elements, but it is an option to drop the colors way down. Um, we're going to keep this here because the next thing is, is I was doing some testing beforehand. It's very difficult to show this. Um, so I'm going to see if maybe dropping the colors down because I wasn't able to text, uh, uh, custom or test this, excuse me, but dithering. So what is dithering? Um, 
let's see here. Uh, I had I had a good blog post about it that one of my coworkers sent me, so I'm going to pull that up really fast. Dithering essentially. When you see GIFs, often you will see a full-size video come on, and then, oh, no, copy that link and put it here, paste and go. So here's a quick thoughts on dithering. So sometimes you'll see a GIF, and the colors in the GIF, instead of being nice and smooth like it is here in this first option, it's down here, and you have these bars going across. And you can kind of see that in... You know what, let me let me export this as a much bigger, we want this, but let's do full size so we can see it nicely. It's going to take just a second longer. But you can see how in the original video you'll watch it and it'll be nice and smooth, all the colors. But as you drop the colors down, in order to compensate for the lack of rendering of these different colors, it's going to put bars in there because it's impossible for the uh, the GIF to have that nice fluid change between colors because there's not enough colors being rendered. And so dithering can help with that. So let's go back to our GIF here. Real big one. Let's throw it into our URL browser. All right. So you can kind of see here in this area right here hard for me to to say but hopefully you can see the top right there's there's kind of a gradient of colors and there's bands I know it's really hard to see when you're live streaming video it's better for you to test this on your own to see exactly what I'm talking about but in this video because we have a lack of colors we get this kind of issue where we have these color bars now when we add a diffusion dither it helps to blend all that stuff together there's a really good gif of this which is pretty funny but dither gif. I'm going to pull this one up. You can see, and this is funny that I'm using a gif to explain what my gif is talking about, but when I open this up, oh, come on, just give me a full version of it. View image. There we go. So you can see in the top left there, it says no dithering. So that's what I'm talking about, how you have these multiple colors and they're kind of like blocked together. And it's something that you'll sometimes see on lower quality GIFs, this kind of color blocking because they've lowered the colors that are allowed and they've lowered the size in order to keep that GIF really small. And as a result, you get this weird, this weird stuff. Now, all of this other stuff is once you've added this algorithm of dithering. Now in ScreenFlow, we don't have as many options as you see here, but the general concept is the same. It's kind of breaking each one of these color boxes into pieces and layering them on top of each other to give you a little bit more blend in your color. So that's what this option is here in ScreenFlow. Um, customize dither and we have two different options we have error diffusion and ordered and essentially when added to your strength light medium heavy error diffusion and ordered it gives you um, six different in levels of intensity so ordered is going to be more resource intensive you're going to have a bigger gif but it's going to look a little bit better than your error diffusion and then within each one of these, you have different strengths to choose from. Heavy error diffusion, light error diffusion, or heavy order dithering. So what I did was I did a little test here, and I have one of each with just a small part of uh, the video that I was talking about. So in this video, up in the top left, there's this little butter bowl right here with a green spoon. And I zoomed in on that and made six different GIFs. And it's hard to see, but there is a difference between them. I'm going to pull out, we've got Error Diffusion Light. And then next to that, we're going to do Ordered Heavy. And theoretically, these are the two biggest differences in this GIF. So here you can see, especially at that part right there, once he brings his hand over the butter dish and then kind of pulls it away, there's a little bit of weird color action going on there. I'm going to let that play for just a second. I don't know how easy it is to see over, uh, over live stream, but you might be able to see it. But now we're going to go to Error Diffusion Light, which is 
not as good. And here, just by clicking immediately, you can see these color boxes so much stronger, so much stronger. In the oil, even, when he's pouring it over, you can see instead of one nice fluid change in color, there's like these little boxes of color in that oil, and it's the same for the butter behind. So w what that really means is that if you get a, a, a GIF with lots of issues, um, here's a nice, a nice representation of it as well. Uh, on the left-hand side, you have all these color bars of this hot air balloon, and this is not dithered. But here on the right-hand side, you have it dithered. So it looks a little bit more blended together. It kind of breaks things out, layers them over each other, and makes it look a lot fluid when changing between colors. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give this some heavy dithering and see if we can make it change at all. So let's go back into Export. Let's customize. We want 30 frames per second, 8 colors, but this time we want ordered heavy dithering. And this is with dither. So now we're going to be able to look at them side by side once I'm done exporting this. And we can see if there's much of a difference between this, this no dithering and full on dithering built into ScreenFlow. Also, it's really fun to say that word, dither. If, if you haven't said it out loud while watching, please say it out loud, dither. It's a great word. Um, all right, so fire test with dither. Let's go back into Google Chrome. Let's open up a new window and drop that in the URL. Oh yeah, you can see it. So I, hopefully you guys can see it. Really where, it, where it's most prominent is in this area up here to the top of the walk and to the bottom of the walk where the right-hand side of the table and the left-hand side of the table are a little bit different. Uh-oh, did I do this without looping them? Well, anyways, up here you can see it's it's there's kind of one band in the middle between dark and light where it's nice and, and fluid between the two colors, and that's with the heavy ordered dithering. And now when I go back to the no dithering, you can see multiple different bands of color coming through here where it's just there's not enough going on to allow it to be a nice fluid change between colors. So that's what that dithering does. It allows you to have less of that blockiness between colors. Yeah, it looks really it looks so much better in the, in the ordered one. Hopefully you guys can see that transferred over. If not, go ahead and pull some video footage in, export it real big like this without any dithering and see if you can see some of that blocking of colors that I'm talking about and then put a dithering filter on it and see if it helps for you. Um, let me go back to here to see if we have any comments. Nope, no comments. We haven't we haven't had a lot of comments lately. Y y that means I'm just doing such a great job of explaining myself that you guys can't even think of something to ask me. So I'm, that's how I'm going to take the lack of comments, is that I'm just so good at explaining. Um, there was one last thing that I wanted to do, and I wanted to show you how I make gifts that we use in our email funnels. So when you're working in marketing, you always have these funnels of emails that when somebody does an action, it triggers a set of emails that go out. So let's say you don't have ScreenFlow yet and you want to check it out. You download the trial. We're going to send you a series of emails that have videos that I created that say, hey, check out this cool feature or, or maybe you can try this in ScreenFlow. Let me, let me take a sip of water. And in that email, we want to boost the engagement of you clicking on the link to watch the video. So what we're going to do instead of say, hey, watch this video, we're going to create a GIF from that video that represents what's going on and what I'm trying to teach and then use that as the button to click to come out and watch the video. So if you guys are in, in business and you're sending out emails and you want someone to watch a video, prompt them with a GIF as opposed to trying to upload the whole video into the email or having nothing or just a picture. If you have a GIF that has some motion in it, people are like, oh, that's a video, I can click it, it'll take them to the video. So let me open up a previous, um, let's see here. I did this video recently with a, a coworker of mine and his name is Max and he was talking about centralized licensing, a different product that we make here at Telestream, uh, Vantage. And it's a really cool video because it's got lots of uh, built-in 
lots of built-in animations like you can see here. Here's one right there and there's I like this one a lot. This one's really cool. So what I did if I wanted to send this out to somebody, what I would do is come to a part in the video that looks really cool in a five or seven or eight second sequence. So if I start right ooh, right here and mark an in point, that's just by pressing I on the keyboard. You can see how the whole right hand side from that scrubber point all to the right is now blue. That's because I marked an in point. Now I'm going to let that play until the end of the Right there. Maybe that looks good. Uh, it's a funny face you're making, Max. Oh, it's never good to pause someone mid-face. Well, what are you going to do? Now I'm going to press O on my keyboard and mark an out point. Now you see I have this nice little structured rectangle of blue. It's because I'm only grabbing all this stuff. So now what I can do is come up and export just that selected range. And instead of web high, I want it to be an animated GIF. Now because I'm doing this as a representation of the video that we want people to watch, I want it to be as smooth as possible. I don't want it to be choppy. So I'm going to come into Customize, and I'm going to boost that frame rate up to 30. 256 as well, because I want it to look as good as the video. And because of that, I probably don't need any dithering, because I'm not as focused on the size of this as I am on the quality because it's representing something that we created here at Telestream. But I am totally okay with making it significantly smaller because it's not the actual video, it's just a representation of it. It's just going to be a little thumbnail in, in the email that I'm sending out. I don't need motion blur, nothing, nothing like that. We're going to add this to my GIF stuff folder, Max Elastic Domain GIF and we're going to export it. That's going to take a little bit longer than other ones because it wasn't the shortest of GIFs. But look at that. I mean, that was less than five seconds. Now I can come back in and click on my GIF stuff folder. Bring it back over here. And I can test to see... Oh, no. Ordered heavy. Oh, there it is. Just took a second to show up. Now I come into Google Chrome again. Open up a new window. Grab that guy. Come on back. Come on. There it is. And drag it into my URL. And now I know that in my email, I'm going to have this sweet little... And you can see as I zoom in, it's not the, the best of quality. That's okay. It's going to be small. It's just a little indicator for people to say, oh, that's a video that I can click on. It'll take me to a video to watch. It's got the animation part because I picked that, that specific part of the video to make into a GIF. And you know, now that I look at it, if I zoom in on his forehead here or even in the background, ooh, that's a good spot right there. Hopefully you can see where my mouse is. You can see on that screen how there's like three different distinct colors. Let's go back in and add dithering to this and see if we can get rid of that. Let's go up, export selected range, customize, dither. We're going to do ordered, heavy. Let's just max it out. Doesn't matter the size of it. Max elastic domain with dither. Dither, dither. Export. And hopefully, we'll be able to come back in here and we can see over here on this screen in the background, we can see a change in the color. Maybe over here on this screen as well, you can see the 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 blockiness of the colors. So let's open up a new tab with dither. Ooh, not all of those. I just want one. By the way, with full dithering, the difference is 12.9 megabytes versus 15.3. So it's a very small difference when you add dithering. So it might even be worth it just to do it all the time. There we go. And now we can zoom right on in. And you can see, you can definitely see the difference. This one, the screens in the background, they have these really like blocky colors with heavy dithering. It's a lot, pic lot more bumpy and pixelated though. That's one of the things that you're going to get. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do one more option. And I'm going to find a nice balance between the heavy dithering and the medium dithering. So let's go back into ScreenFlow. I'm going to keep it on ordered because I like that but I'm going to change the strength to light and see if that helps me at all with dither light with light dither whatever either way works we're also going to be able to see the size difference between heavy dithering and light dithering 
So we've got the original no dither, 12.9. Heavy dithering, that's 15.3. And light dithering, it says zero bytes, but that's clearly not the case. It just needs a second to catch up with itself. Let's pull it into our web browser first. Just like that. Ooh. All right. I like this the best so far. So this one's 14 megabytes. Heavy dithering is 15.3, and no dithering is 12.9. So it's all contained in a very small uh, change or band. But here's the here's no dithering, where you get those blocky colors. Here's heathery, heavy dithering, where you don't get the blocky colors, but you do get weird pixelation. Like you can see this part right here looks really weird because it's super pixelated and bright. Light dithering. This is definitely the best so far. You still have a little bit of coloring, but it looks a little bit better. It's not as heavy with that pixelation. And keep in mind, this is actually going to be viewed at this size. So it's going to be almost impossible to see the difference there. Whereas with this, even at the 100, whoops, even at the 100% size, more or less right there, you can still see those color blocks. So dithering will help with that kind of stuff. Um, let me close all these and come back. Still no comments. And hey, Randy Frid, I'm doing a great job. Thanks for that. Scott Clark, you are doing a great job. Thanks for that as well. Are GIFs that are embedded in email something that will trip off a spam filter? Now, I'm going to assume the answer is no, considering we send out thousands of emails with GIFs. And we probably wouldn't continue doing that if it was setting off spam filters. But I am definitely not the person to ask that question to, Randy. Um, so I, I don't know the answer for sure. My inclination is that no, it doesn't have an issue. But I can't for sure say yes or no. It's something you're going to have to research on your own. Um, but regardless, it will help boost engagement. That's what we found, at least. Um, and then Ethan B says, still making some great videos for my channel. Awesome, dude. Awesome. I am also making some great videos on a regular basis. I love ScreenFlow. I use it all the time. Um, but that will conclude today's lesson on GIFs. That's, um, that's how I use GIFs. We went through the whole export process and, and some of the good ways of doing it and, and good ways of making sure that you optimize for size depending on where you're going to be hosting this GIF. If you're, you know, if it's on your main page, maybe you don't want to loop it. If it's in an email, it doesn't really matter the quality because it just was going to show a way to get somewhere. Or maybe it does matter. It's all up to you. But you now have the options of making these GIFs, pulling out just a segment of a video, turning it into a GIF, and using it somewhere else. Um, and if you want to, it's always, you know, fun to use them just for stupid things like hey i want to make a nice reaction gif which is real a real classic thing with the youngsters these days reaction gifs i also use them so it's, it's, you don't have to be that young but you know what i mean um but yeah with that i just want to say thank you so much for coming today uh once again it's always a pleasure to be here and answer questions if you've got them um what brand of headphones am i wearing this thing this microphone is called a one more time, to really A Countryman microphone. Um, I think if you just type in Countryman mic, yeah, you'll see those headset mics. Um, it's an XLR. It's just going through my thing. It just hooks onto my thing here, my ear, my thing. Uh, looks like this one is almost 400 bucks. I'm not sure how much these were. We've had them forever. This is the newer version of them. Uh, but they're real handy and real real easy to use. I'm not the biggest fan. I usually like to have a microphone in front of me just off screen. But for these live shows, it's much easier to do it this way. Um, but when I'm doing VOD content, I like to put like a Blue Yeti or maybe like an Audio-Technica condenser mic just out of the screen in front of me. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I'm using here. And cool. Thanks, everyone, for coming. I hope that was helpful for you. We will be back in two weeks with a new topic. As to what that is, I'm not quite sure. But welcome to Season 3 of Screen for Live. This was my 20th episode, and we will be continuing soon. So be sure to follow us on our social channels, at ScreenFlow on Twitter, ScreenFlow Tube for YouTube, um, and also 
Facebook, of course. Facebook.com slash ScreenFlow. Thank you all for coming, uh, Randy and Ethan and um, Scott. Thank you guys for telling me how awesome I am. I think so, too. Um, and then, of course, if you want to be updated with our uh, weekly sh- or bi-weekly show, telestream.net slash ScreenFlow Live. You can sign up there, and you will get an email telling us telling you what the show's about and uh, when we're going live. So thanks, everyone, for coming, and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye-bye.